Hey guys, welcome to Tech Topics. My name is Chris, I'm an SRE in RTP North Carolina, and I'm here today to talk to you about shadow clones. Before we get to shadow clones, let's talk a little bit about a linked clone. So a linked clone is something in uh, VMware View or other VDI solution, where multiple VMs use a delta disk, which inherits a base disk. So the base disk here has the operating system installed and all of your base utilities, such as Office. The VMs here, they, when they make a write, they write to their delta disk. If they make a read, the delta disk sees if that VM has done a read, or done a write to that space already, and returns that. Otherwise, it returns it from the base disk. This allows you to have four or a hundred VMs based off the same image, which speeds up deployment time and reduces the amount of storage space you use. So that's what it looks like logically. Let's go take a look at it physically. So here I've drawn out two nodes in a Nutanix cluster. There are more nodes in the cluster, but we don't need them right now. As you can see, I've got four linked clones that have their base disks here, that are based off disk A here. VMs A and B are on the same host as their base disk, so they have SSD speed access to this. It is very fast, it's awesome. C and D have to go over the 10 gig network here to get to their base disk. It's not terrible, but it's also not the best performance they could have. For four VMs, this is fine. However, when you start scaling up to say 100 or 800 desktops, now you run into a problem. You've got 800 VMs requesting reads to this base disk across the network, and it's only one base disk. So this produces a ton of extra net network traffic and a hotspot in the cluster, which will reduce performance for all the VMs. So in order to uh, combat this, we came up with a feature called Shadow Clones. Now with Shadow Clones, NOS will automatically detect that multiple nodes in the cluster are reading from the base disk. It has to be 100% read. If there's any writes to this one disk, it won't do this. So once it detects this situation, we go over here and replicate a copy of the base disk on each node that is reading from that base disk. Now VMs C and D have local access. Once again, SSD tier most likely, super fast. There's not extra load on the network, and we've distributed the load evenly between these two uh, Hosts. This allows you to scale up to, as I said, hundreds of VMs, and it'll put one disk on each node that runs these VMs. Now, the important thing to note is this is different from redundancy. With redundancy, or RF2, we keep an extra copy of this base disk somewhere else in the cluster. However, that disk is not readable. You can't read or write to that disk. You can only read it from this base disk or its shadow clones. So it's important to note the difference there. Shadow clones are disabled by default. However, there is no performance impact of turning them on, and they're seamless once you've turned them on. You don't need to think about it, it just works. It detects situations where it'd be beneficial and makes it happen. You can look, run the command below to enable it, and then the, there's other command there to see the status of it in your cluster right now. Finally, if you look below, I have a link to a PowerPoint where you can see these commands, some troubleshooting commands, and some commands you can run to see if this is right for your environment. It also has some graphs that show you the performance gains you get from using Shadow Clones compared to a standard deployment. Thanks for joining us again here with Tech Topics. I hope it was informative and that you're able to use this information in your environment soon. Thanks and have a great day.